WVTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. to Ministry Moments with your host, Bishop Eric Mitchell, brought to you each Tuesday at 4 p.m. on internet radio station, WVTCradio.com. Bishop Mitchell is the senior pastor of Greater Emmanuel Temple of Deliverance, the Church in Zion, located at 15701 James Cousins Freeway in the city of Detroit. You have time to text or email a friend and tell them, to come see a man who's going to help us. The next speaking voice will be that of the prophet of the hour, Bishop Eric Mitchell.
know why they're so happy. But the Bible says to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And all we do is talking about it. I'm saved. He saved my soul and he made me whole. I am saved. You better pick them feet up and praise him, ladies and gentlemen, because God has saved. He has rescued. He has made the body of Christ and the people of God. He has made us whole through his redeeming blood. I'm saved. I feel like dancing again. Y'all don't, y'all don't understand. Do you understand what it means to be able to make the proclamation, I am saved? I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet, and my joy is complete, because I'm saved, saved, I'm saved. Y'all don't know, y'all don't know, y'all, y'all don't know, y'all don't want to help me today. I'm saved by his power divine, I'm saved. To new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. Saved. Oh, I'm saved. Well, hallelujah. Now, I done messed around and got happy already. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Saved. By his power divine, say to new life sublime. Life now is sweet, and my joy is complete. Cause I'm saved, saved. Lord, I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest today. I want to thank him for saving me because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Come on, somebody, praise the name of your God, whose name is Jesus, and thank him for saving your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him for making you whole. Huh. Woo. I, Am I the only one ready to run? I feel like getting up and running. Y'all not saying nothing to me. I feel like getting up going right in. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, Evangelist Rose done did it to me again. She done got me all stirred up. Mm, mm, mm. That's all right, saints. Now that's all right. How you doing, saints? You doing well? Are you doing well? Hold me up. I'm trying to move on, but for real, I'm caught up. I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet, sweet, and my joy is complete. 
Cause I'm saved. I'm saved. Oh, I'm saved. I feel a running in my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand salvation? And do, do you understand salvific process? What took place for you and I to be saved? I don't, I don't know if the church understands salvific process and what Jesus went through to rescue us and to save us. See, many of us think we're saved because we have a list of things that we don't do. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't this. I don't that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not what saved you. What saved you is Jesus died on a cross called Calvary, shed his blood for your sins. And if you have faith in him, it is the faith that you have in the grace that he has given us that has saved you. It is not your works. Least any man should boast. We can't be that good to save ourselves. Somebody had to save us. His name is Jesus. All right, I hear you, Uncle Johnny. And he was hung up for our hangups. <laughs> All right. Don't misconstrue these tears today. These are tears of joy. He saved me. See, the church get quiet when you start talking about being saved or when you start talking about biblical principles. But when you, you know, talking crazy, as my grandson could say, you get all kind of responses. And, but when you start talking about Jesus, most people can't relate to him. The only thing we can relate to in the church and give our thumbs up to and give our responses to is when people start talking about our pain or when people start talking about what we've been through, our circumstances. And so we've made the church be all about your pain and your circumstances. That's not salvation, ladies and gentlemen. Salvation is about Jesus. And Jesus will lift your burdens if you ever come into contact with him. If you ever met Jesus, he could turn your life around. <laughs> oh, yes, he could. And in many cases, he does it without our permission. I will tell you, God has gotten me out of many things. I didn't even give him permission to get me out of. I wasn't wise enough to even know I needed to be out, but he got me out. Cause I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. Because I'm saved, saved, oh, I'm saved, Lord Jesus. I want to point you today at a scripture text. I want you to come with me and journey with me to a scripture text, which is found in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, and I want you to look at verse two. Well, let's start at verse one. If my daughter Catrice is on here today, 
That's the song Patrice used to sing all the time at the temple. I'm saved by his power divine. And that first song that Dr. Rose had on was uh, our beloved Darlene Williamson from the Temple of St. Jude. The Temple of St. Jude used to sing, he saved my soul. And what would just, just take it on through is at the end of the song, they would go right into work it out. I'm saying, Jesus can work it out. And I tell you, we used to dance something uh, fool uh, in 87, 47 Finkel. I'm glad the Lord did a work in me years ago. And I'm glad I don't have to, I don't have to argue with people about the work or whether the work was done or not. I have evidence. You know, faith gives you evidence. I don't have to argue with people about the evidence of my salvation. I don't have to argue with people about whether God has laid his hands on me or not. My faith has evidence. I think that's what he said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been saved by God, there's no argument of your salvation. Uh, all last week, I listened to people just, you know, argue and go through. Uh, and these, these, these media wars that y'all have, if you got it, it'll speak for itself. I can't hear nobody. If you got it, you don't have to say it. It'll show. If you, if you got it, if you got it, I got it. Let me see. Wait. <laughs> oh, Jesus. As I move forward in the things of God and God takes me further and allows me to branch out and to see more people than to you know, have um, camaraderie or fellowship or whatever y'all want to call it with other people. You know, I am just blown away with people who say they are saved and have been called by God. I'm, I'm just blown away with people who you know, our leaders in the church. Uh, I understand more and more every day why the church is like it is, especially if first priests, then people, if the people are like the preachers, I understand why the church is in the predicament that it's in. Um, and so I am one of those preachers that, you know, you say crazy stuff to me, I ain't never scared to rebut you. I'm never scared to put you in your place and uh, have give you a full working understanding of what it is you're supposed to be doing and what it is you're not supposed to be doing. Because if you're gonna be a member of Greater Emmanuel and a member in particular, like priests, like people, if you're not gonna produce my character, you're not going to say, that you walk with me. And so I have never, uh, and if you take the end off of never, that's still a long time. I've never shied away from uh, letting people know what my position and my, my place is. Because if you're looking at church today, and that's why a lot of people don't want our churches. Because we keep talking about how saved we are, but we don't produce none of the character of God. Our mouths are flippant. Our attitudes are bad. We're so reactive and so emotional all the time. Every, and, and, and it is because we are self-centered and selfish. Everything has to be about us. 
And if it's not about us, we gonna make it about us. <laughs> a lot of times when the preacher stand up, he's not talking to you unless he's talking to you. <laughs> She's not talking about you. Why do y'all take stuff so personally and take it upon yourself? I remember I was doing a program on a broadcast on another platform. And I said, people are always trying to figure out who I'm talking about instead of what I'm talking about. If you would spend more of your time trying to figure out what pastor is talking about, then who pastor is talking about? Maybe you could get delivered. It's not the who, it's the what. Be interested in the word, the word of God. It's the only thing that brings deliverance. Even in the Bible, the word came from a circumstance. So, so many times we'll have to use the Bible to deal with a circumstance, but y'all are so concerned about the circumstance that you're not even hearing the teaching. It's the what we're talking about, not the who. Because the who is a spirit. And the what is the way to get rid of the spirit. We're trying to teach you how to deal with spirits. Unless you the spirit. <laughs> That's what my friend, Dr. Adams would call you. You know, when you get out of there, look here spirit. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And as I go forward and I deal with more people, I see the rampant possession of people. People are possessed with spirits. And I'm gonna tell y'all another reason. Uh, I was looking, I was thumbing through, this, through the Facebook before I came on and one of my daughters in ministry, uh, Sister LaDonna Bell, she had on her, on her page, she said, Boy, if you get on Facebook and make any kind of comment, everybody wants to turn it into a battle. You know why, uh, daughter? Because look at Jesus would show up wherever he was. Spirits began to cry out because they, they, they could never keep silence in the presence of deliverance. You know why you people act out and cry? Them spirits in you can't be quiet whenever truth is around. <laughs> that's why you get to type in all this crazy stuff. And that's why you got to respond to everybody's, you know, post that always got something negative to say. It's a spirit in you crying out. Now, I guess when I go view this video, nobody will have typed anything after that. <laughs> love Jesus. I love you, church people. I love y'all. I do. Because when I tell you, wow, y'all are a lot to deal with. You are. And you don't like to be corrected. You do not like correction. No, 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 no. Them spirits crying out, ladies and gentlemen. I am, I'm a 50 something year old man. And it tickles me. I watch people all the time. They always trying to get a reaction out of me. I ain't got nothing to say to you because you're beneath me. You, you, you don't merit my time. I tell them on Great Emmanuel, don't erase people's posts. Don't block them. When they come on and they say something, don't block it. Let everybody see and let everybody know how these people feel. That's the problem. 
we have covered people for so long and then they go and lie to other people. You know what I'm saying? And people don't know how they really feel. Let, let it be known what these people say. Let's stop covering up for folks. Let it be known what they say. Let it be known what they posted. Let it be known what they emailed. Let it be known what they typed. Let it be known what they told everybody that they thought was in secret so they can stop having all these private consultations with everybody. Let's, let's now, watch this, let's now start telling the truth. And I know y'all gonna say, well, the truth causes confusion. Nope, we're gonna tell the truth in love. Yeah, we gonna, this is what you said. Praise the Lord. This is what you said. We need to let it be, we need to let it be known. We need to let everybody know what people are saying. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. And if it come out of your mouth, that's what's in your heart. And so I feel like, not feel like talking this year. This year I'm telling everything. If you say it, I'm telling. I'm telling. <laughs> That guy, Logan, he owes me $50,000. And if I don't get it, I'm telling. I'm telling everything. If you don't want me to tell people what you said about them, don't tell me. Because if you tell me, I'm telling them. You need to stay away from them because here's how they feel about you. And this is what they said to me. Y'all not saying nothing. I'm not playing games with you church people this year. This year, we're, we're going to hold your feet to the fire. And I'm talking to you bishops who secretly sneak on my broadcast. I'm talking to you pastors, you overseers, you wannabes, you un undies and will never bees. I'm talking to all y'all. Your jealous spirit has caused you to run amok in God's house and the people of God are tired of it. And so am I. My song came on. Evangelist Rose put my song on. He saved my soul. How many of you know your soul is saved? What is your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions? Your spirit should already be the spirit of God. And so what God has to do is he has to do a work in your intellect, your thinking. He has to do a work in your emotions, Lord Jesus. And he has to do a work in your will. And so once God saves you, your mind changes. You're no longer emotionally disturbed. And then your will changes also. Your will ceases to seek its own and your will desires to do the work of Jesus Christ. I have given myself to the work of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I am not perfect. I've never portrayed myself to be perfect. I'm temperamental. I, I will, yeah, I will lose it in a minute because I'm very passionate about what I do. And um, people who talk crazy makes me lose it. When, when you start talking crazy, I'm, I'm about to lose it. I know I am. And watch this. When you start making excuses for people, that boils my blood also. Because here is a saying that I've had at Gregory Manuel for years. Them who make excuses for others, always get an excuse for themselves. 
The only reason some people make excuses for others is because they always have an excuse for themselves. And so when we start going along with crazy stuff, stuff that we know ain't got no business going on, and then we want to hide it and cover it and cover up for folk. And who taught y'all that that was godly? Yes, God forgives sin. But the Bible said he who covers his sin. See, that's what God hates. God hates the cover up of sin more than he hates sin because he has given blood redemption for, for sin. Sin has been forgiven by Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago. There is a remedy for sin that has already been delivered. But there's no remedy for the cover up. When we start covering sin, the only thing that can remedy that is repentance. Ooh, y'all don't want to talk to me. See, you, you, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to make about 30 of y'all mad. You New Day Christians who have not really been paper Bible saved don't even know what the Bible says. But see, I'm paper Bible saved. This is this the only Bible I got. I don't do phone Bibles. I'm paper Bible say. <laughs> I'm gotta, I am got to get in there and look and find it, Bible say. I'm got to read it for myself, Bible say. No, this ain't just some instant thing somebody gave me. This is what we had to learn through study and rebuke. And see, that's why most of us are so weak in the faith now because we can't handle rebuke. You don't like going to churches where the pastor rebukes you and you, you, you know, I, I don't go over there. He, they too strong. They too strong. And I, I know you can't take a strong word because you weak. But you, when you walk with people like I walked with that rebuked you on every hand, re rebuked you for waking up, you know, who told you to wake up like that? Rebuke, <laughs> rebuke you for walking. Uh, I, I didn't tell you you could walk. See, that gives you a strength that most of you Christians don't have. You're weak. You're snivelly. You can't handle nothing. Not for the sake of Jesus, but you stay with a man who whipped your hand part every day for five years. And you didn't even think about leaving. And the only reason you left is because he left you for somebody else. But you walk away from God because somebody tell you that's not right or that's not the appropriate way to handle things or that's not how you should be. I don't know how tell me. Man, go on. Y'all better go on because there's a day of reckoning coming. Now y'all didn't get me stirred. I had a young lady text my phone yesterday and she said, Bishop, I've been looking at you uh, on the Morning Glory platform. And she said, I, I want to tell you, you saved my life. She said, I I I've been a member of Great Emmanuel, but I was flipping and flopping and twisting and turning. She said, but I want you to know during this pandemic, you saved my life. There were several days that I was going to commit suicide. And I don't even know how your broadcast got on and it saved my life. She said, cause you didn't play with me. And that's what's wrong with the saints. Y'all want people to play with y'all. Ain't nobody got that. Come on, Gavin. Ain't nobody got no time for that. That's what my grandson say all the time. Ain't nobody got no time for that. Ain't nobody got no time to be playing right now. Do y'all know we are under a major, major attack, not only of the enemy, but then we're under a major rebuke of God at the same time. So we're fighting the devil and being rebuked by God. God is whipping up one side of our heads and down the other. 
and the church is still acting a fool. And I rebuke those spirits. It's about Jesus and him crucified. It's not even about your feelings. I'm so sick of people talking about their feelings. I, 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 I. Go away and leave us alone. People want, people want to control us. That's the problem. They want to control us. They want to talk about us like a dog, but then want us to sow into them and give to them. But they have no care for us. Isn't that what David said? David said, no man careth for my soul. Can I tell y'all something? And, and we're going to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. People know when you don't care for their soul. Pe people, people know when you don't care about their soul. I'm not talking about their tithe in their offering. People know when you care about their souls. Evangelist Rose had that song on for me. And, and I'm going to say this. I know I pastored this city. From those red chairs in my basement, from this white chair up here in my office, in my library, and from that pulpit at 15701 James Cousin, I know that I pastored this entire city. I know the people who come on broadcast and look at me. I know the people who won't even let me know that they look at me. I know that I pastor this city and I do it with a humility because I am grateful to God that he allows me the opportunity to share with people. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. People may never tell you that they watch, but they respect me and they watch and they listen for my cues and they listen to see what I'm doing. I've had pastors to call me and say, I'm not going back into my church until you go back in yours because I trust the word of God in, on your life. I don't have to be around blabber mouth in that all the time, ladies and gentlemen. I know the call on my life. And guess what? So do a lot of you. And we need to quit shucking and jiving and hemming and hawing. And just be honest and truthful. You don't have to like me. I've never asked you to like me. I just want you to hear. Hear what the Lord says. And weigh it. See if it's God or not. Ephesians chapter 2. Remember, we were just dancing from Minister Thomas Whitfield and the Whitfield Company. He saved my soul. Well, let's look at this text. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. Here begins the reading of God's holy and sanctified and consecrated word. And you has he quickened. Daba. Now I know immediately when we hear the word quicken, we think that means shake. Okay, well you, quickening does mean shaking. But biblically, quickening has another theology or terminology. The word quicken means to be made alive. And you have he made alive. Oh, glory to God. And I'm going to tell y'all, Shabbat, I'm going to tell y'all something. The only reason that sickness has not taken many of us out, the only reason that cancer has not killed many of us, the only reason that lupus and Oh, Lord, have mercy. COVID-19 has not destroyed a lot of our bodies. It's because he has quickened us. Tell me, God, see, glory to God. And you will understand that the power of God doesn't just work in church because we ain't been in church for a year. And he is still quickening us. Oh, glory to God. 
You better not and get happy. I'm back now. How many of you are praising God for his quickening power? For making you alive when the enemy wanted you dead? For making you alive when people wanted you dead? For making you alive when the sickness that came was to take you out? But you have he quickened. Oh, God. And you were dead in trespasses and sin. I can't hear nobody. God made you alive when you were a dead sinner. God's got you a, a live believer now. He has quickened you. Oh, Shabbat. He come on, Shia. You were dead. I was dead in trespasses and in sin. But now I am alive. And I shall be alive forever now. For he that believeth shall have an everlasting life. Y'all ain't. I'm going to tell y'all something. The greatest advantage of salvation is eternal life. They ain't been teaching us right in church in a long time. They keep trying to make us think that being saved has to do with a car, a job, or a house. No, having to be saved has everything to do with spending eternal life with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he has translated me from a sinner to a believer. I was once dead in trespasses and sin, but now I am alive because he has quickened me. Look at verse two. Look at Ephesians chapter two, verse two. Wherein in times past, you walked according to the course of the world. God saved us from the world, saints. Y'all don't want to help me today. I said, God saved us from the world. We are in the world, but we're not of it. Hey, Basha. Hey, Mania. How, let me tell y'all something. If you've been saved, all right, that came out wrong. I'm sorry. Come back, Eric. If you've been saved, he saved you from the world. He saved you and I from our own lust. My, 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 my. He saved us from our own desires. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk. He, he rescued us from our raunchy, low-down lives. And he changed the very course of our walk. And now he has us walking in ordered footsteps. Wherein in times past, we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. You know, it tickles me when I listen to these people and they talk not to tell the devil, go back to hell. The devil has never been to hell. Where are y'all, what are y'all talking about? The devil has never been to hell. The devil is the prince of the air. The devil's banishment in the end will be to hell and fire and brimstone. But the devil is not in hell. The devil is in the atmosphere. Prince of the air, powers, principalities, principalities of the air, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. See, that's why we can't defeat him because when we talk to him, we're ironious in our authority. I send the devil back to hell. You can't send him back to a place he ain't never been. What are you talking about? <laughs> but when you rebuke him, yeah, no, 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 no. You rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And when Jesus, look, when Jesus rebuked the spirits, he didn't even tell them to go back to hell. That's how I know what y'all be talking about ain't biblical. He put them in the swine, and the swine ran and jumped off the side of the cliff. Am I in the Bible? Bible readers, he didn't rebuke the devil and the spirits back to hell when he called Legion out. He didn't tell them to go back to hell. He just told them, come out. My young doe, oh, 
Kondo. My God. He told them to come out. Y'all, okay. See how misinformed we are as people of God. And we get angry when people tell us we don't know what we're doing. He says the prince and the power of the air and the spirit. Look, look at how the devil works. Let me tell you how the devil works now. The prince and the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's how the devil gets in and gets in so quickly and gets in so easily because we are children of disobedience. We do nothing God tells us to do. And because we do nothing God tells us to do, God does not live in us. So something else comes and takes up residence in us because we are the children of disobedience. You know, what tickles me the most is people who do things and then try to quote scripture. But you weren't quoting the scripture when you was doing what you call yourself quoting scripture against right now. You are a child of disobedience. Look at verse three, Ephesians chapter two, verse three. Among whom also we have had our conversation in times past. In times past, we were horrible when it came to our mouth. Oh, good God from Zion. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. I said in times past, when it came to our mouth, we were horrible. The conversations we had, the things we talked about, horrible, horrible. These bishops and overseers and apostles, the Bible says that blessings and cursings can't come out of the same mouth. God forbid. Among whom we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Our very nature is against God. David said we were shaped in sin and formed in iniquity. Oh, I'm talking the Bible today and y'all don't wanna talk to me. There is nothing good in us. Y'all don't want to help me. Inherently, we are sinners. We have inherent sin. But God, hey, who is rich in mercy. I'm at verse three now. He's rich in mercy. For his great love wherein he loved us. My God. Even, look at verse five. Even when we were dead in sin, has he made us alive? Has he quickened us together with Christ? By grace are we saved. And he has raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. By grace are we saved through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. So when we start talking, we can't give ourselves no credit. Because if we are saved, we're saved by two things. We're saved by grace through faith. We're saved by grace through
through faith. And neither one of us, neither one of those belong to us. Both of those are godly principles. And so if you and I are saved, it has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with the God that saved us. He saved us by grace through faith. And that grace is the gift of God that none of us merited. But it is a free gift. So stop letting people knock you upside your head with their righteousness. And they ain't righteous at all. Salvation comes from God. Salvation comes through the work that Jesus did on Calvary. It is the grace of God through faith that saves people. Not your inability to, or your ability to abstain from things. I don't care what you and I abstain from. I don't care what you and I don't do. I don't care where you and I don't go. Remember what the prophet Elisha said? All of our righteousness is filthy rags in God's sight. We can't, we can't go to God and present to him nothing. We're nasty in the presence of God. All of us are. That's why they got so happy when they were saying, he saved my soul. Because they knew it was nothing they could do of their own. God had to save us. And if you and I are saved, God saved us. It's not us, y'all. Get that out your mind. Get that out your mind that you can work to be saved. Your works can't save you. It is your relationship with Jesus Christ that saves you. I love you. I do. That's why I want to teach you. I love you. And I want you to stay in relationship with God so you can stay saved. It's been another ministering moment with your brother, Eric Mitchell. And if you ain't mad with me, Love me this week. <laughs> oh, glory, glory, glory. I'll see you next week on Ministry Moments. God bless you. You have just been listening to Ministry Moments with Bishop Eric Mitchell, brought to you live each Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Internet Radio Station WVTCRadio.com. We appreciate you tuning in. Bishop Mitchell is a senior pastor of Greater Emmanuel Temple of Deliverance, the Church in Zion, located at 15701 James Cousins Freeway in the city of Detroit, Michigan, zip code 48238. The telephone number is 313-341-4000. If you have been inspired or touched by this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this broadcast on your Facebook page and with a friend or family member? We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Ministry Moments with Prophet Mitchell on WVTC Radio Detroit, where we are winning victory through Christ. You're listening to WVTC, Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.